We put this together pretty quick. Obviously, daisy containers are not the best for putting together water harvesting systems. Alright, uh, come on, stop, stop your clickety clack. Oh, <laughs> okay. Alright, anyway, good morning everyone. You're watching the Green Dream Project, Jim here. It's a cold day today, but not as cold as it was the other day. Uh, the other day it got below, uh, it was into the teens overnight. Ugh. But I think we came out of that okay. Nothing frozen, nothing busted. Well, there was some fro freezing going on, but. Nothing busted, which is nice. But we are expected to get some precipitation soon. And that's the exciting thing. So again, we have another project that we decided to do. It's going to, again, delay the rain roof project. But since we are expected to get some rain, we figured this might be a good time to actually get a solid rain catchment system in place. This is, again, this is going to be temporary, but a little bit better than what we've got going on. Let me show you what we've got going on. All right, so this is what was set up at the Hacienda, and it was just a little makeshift system set up by Grace and Peter to collect a little rain uh, rainwater on the quick. And it's pretty simple. They just, well, stack some pallets up, tied some old of a metal roofing material up to here, and then it'll catch a decent amount of rainwater, even from the from the one panel here. We are expected to get a decent amount of rain. We thought now would be a good time to disassemble this. Uh, well, I mean, it's a nice little temporary system, but unfortunately it gets in the way of the, the straw. And the panel just empties out into the little 55-gallon barrel right over here. This, uh, this little system's actually filled this up to overflowing. But we're going to try and get some gutters up on here today and actually funnel it into one of the IBC totes that we have. So we already have a couple of IBC totes here ready to go. That's great. But as they are right now, they sit way too low to the ground for us to be able to utilize that water. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is try and raise these up. Now, if these things get full, they're gonna be incredibly heavy. That's why I've come up with this. So during an excursion a while back, we were able to pick up a bunch of reclaimed wood from a property that was being foreclosed on. And some of that reclaimed wood were these giant, big giant pieces of wood. Now, some of them are pretty long. This was an eight foot section. And then I took the saws all over there and just saw it right through that. So I'm gonna do that a bunch more times and I'm gonna try and make some stands for these things to sit on. All right, now one obstacle standing in the way of us putting up gutters along here is the slight angle on these purlins. What I'm gonna do is create little angled pieces to attach on here to straighten them up, and then we should be able to attach gutters. All right, so I used the miter saw and I cut my angled pieces there. It's kind of an odd angle, about 12 degrees, but it looks like just about perfect. Now I'm gonna disassemble this whole thing so that I can get up there and do what I need to do. Now I'm going to attach my little wedge pieces that I make cut to straighten out each of these boards. All right, now that we got the angled pieces up, oh, there's Jessica. Now that we've got the angled pieces up on the on the rafters, we brought out our gutters. <laughs> and we're ready to start putting this piece up. Right? <laughs> well, I apologize. It's a windy day out here. So I hope you can hear me okay. But we've just moved the IBC to next to the humanure hacienda. And then uh, that'll give us much more storage than we originally had with the, the blue barrel. 
and we hope we've raised, we've raised it up to a height where we think it should be uh, very usable right over here. All right, now I need to get this part for the downspout in here, and in order to do that, I'm gonna need to drill a hole. Okay, we are actually going to attempt to do this with this attachment and a hose. <laughs> Wish us luck on this. All right, good morning, this is the next day. We're gonna see how well this is performing. Are we actually collecting any water? Again, we kind of threw this together real quick based on some stuff we had. You can see right here, that's not good. We're losing water there. I if we are even getting anything. <laughs> we have to, uh, we put this together pretty quick. Obviously, daisy containers are not the best for putting together water harvesting systems. <laughs> Definitely a cold, snowy day out. <laughs> oh, look at all the snow. Uh, let me show you the newest, latest addition to our rain catchment. All right, it's deep into the afternoon and I'm very excited. <laughs> so all the snow that's on there is pretty much all melted. It's a stark difference between this morning and now. Uh, the snow melted quick. But this is exciting because I can now get to show you exactly what's going on here. <laughs> I'll show you how we ended up. So one thing, let me just say, with all that snow that we collected from this roof, we got about approximately 25 gallons. Now, 25 gallons may not seem like a lot to most people, but living in the desert, you know, as much as you can collect, it's a boom. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm elated. So I wish we could have gotten more footage of how we put it up, but let me take you through the basic construction. So this is basically two pieces of gutter that we attached in the middle. Uh, this really should be structurally sturdy. I'm actually surprised it held up under the, the snow load, but it did. And it's connected at it's connected at five points, and it should be more. It should at least be every two feet, but this is every five feet. It's probably not good. Hopefully it will hold up. We just added these little brackets right here. It hooks underneath the lip of the gutter and then you screw it into the, the wood or whatnot right here. And that's that's pretty much all it is for attachment. Then uh, an end cap over here, an end cap on the other side, a little uh, mending piece in the middle, and any points that aren't sealed well like over here, it all gets a, a weld glue that goes around the edges. As you can see, we had to cut a hole under the bottom side of this gutter in order to get the, in order to get this downspout piece in. And uh, all that's gotta get sealed up so that we don't lose any water. Now the construction going from the gutter into the barrel is fairly simple. We just got some PVC pieces, a three inch to two inch connector going into a two inch pipe, 90 degree elbow, another two inch pipe, another 90, down in there, and then a two inch bulkhead fitting. I added this little piece of wood with a bracket underneath just to give it support, and then a little U-bolt to keep the pipe from moving. One thing you'll notice I did not add onto this is PVC glue. Now, if this were going to be a permanent spot, yeah, I would definitely want PVC glue added onto this to prevent any leakage. But as this may still may not be its final iteration, we um, I thought maybe it would be good to go without it, just so that these pieces might be able to be reused. It's looking good, though. All right, walk with me, talk with me. <laughs> so this is really a project that's been long overdue. Again, I don't know why we thought we had to get the, the permanent thing in place. This is going to do an amazing job of just catching some water in the meantime. Uh, we might throw up some gutters on uh, the shed real quick. Because that's just a loss right there. It's uh, more water we could have had. We're getting there. We're learning. <laughs> and then, of course, the rain roof is still 
under construction. We haven't made much progress uh, since the last update. Um, we've been facing, of course, high winds, the snow, everything, so it's been a little rough going, but we'll be back to work on that ASAP. So I'm really excited. I can't even begin to describe exactly how excited I am about this. <laughs> I'm not really quite sure what the whole setup was because the gutters we had from our previous setup back when we lived in Coolidge, and these are just extra gutters that we had. So that didn't cost us anything this time. Of course, we did pay for that eventually. I forget how much it was per gutter. Luckily, we still had all those supplies. The IBC tote was free. Many thanks to my former employer. It's very cool. Maybe I can score some more free IBC totes in the future. I don't know. And the PVC pieces. I probably could have got it cheaper, but unfortunately I had to go to the nearest hardware store. So those pieces probably cost me just under 20 bucks. Uh, the two inch piping we did have, so that was nice. Altogether though, the I think this whole setup probably cost less than 50 bucks if you include the gutters, the PVC. If you include the gutters and the PVC, I'm thinking it's probably less than 50 bucks and now we can collect all kinds of water off the uh, humanure hacienda. Can, I can't be beat. All right, this has probably gone on long enough. I'm really not sure. I got so much footage here. <laughs> if you have any questions, any concerns, any thoughts, please leave those down below. We'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. We'd love to have you around. There's so much more going on for water harvesting. We're so excited. Ah! <laughs> yeah, uh, share this with a friend or two because they want to know about water harvesting and how to set up really simple, easy to do, easy DIY water harvesting projects. Don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Really thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll catch you on the next video.